Hi folks, it's Calc here, and in this session we're going to take a good look at how we can use components um, specifically with the Novation SL Mark III controller keyboard. Um, now, Novation Components software is the software that allows you to manage um, your hardware. It's the kind of the, if you like, the, the manager for your uh, SL Mark III, um, alongside lots of other pieces of equipment from Novation as well. Um, and in specific terms with the SL Mark III, uh, components is essentially going to be a librarian for you to be able to store and back up everything that you've got on the SL Mark III but also it's a very powerful way of being able to create your own templates. Now a template allows you to essentially create a, um, a, a kind of a series of controls for your favorite pieces of hardware. Now the SL Mark III is um, well it's an eight track full-blown hardware sequencer held within a keyboard format um, but as you can see we've got lots of different types of controls here we've got our eight faders uh, we've got 16 buttons here um, we've got eight knobs here and if I scroll down as well I actually have another eight knobs so we've got 16 controls just here in the pots um, here my pads well at the moment they're set to represent what's going on in the sequencer but if I press the grid button we've got another set of 16 pressure sensitive controls that we can use to control and manipulate our devices. Um, so with all of this we need some kind of means to be able to create our own templates and kind of build our uh, yeah build our control collection um, for our favorite bits of hardware. But equally, if I go to my sessions page here on the SL Mark III, uh, you see now I've got all the various different sessions uh, that I've stored into my hardware. And I've got 64 different uh, sessions available to me in one kind of uh, one kind of sitting and that's a lot of data to kind of manage and, and, and kind of back up and control. So we're going to take a look at the components software here. Um, you can see we've got components on the uh, on the screen and then we've also got the screens themselves from the SL Mark III at the bottom here so hopefully you can kind of see what's going on um, and yeah let's go directly to control the SL Mark III. And just you can see actually here we've got all of these various different uh, devices that are available to be controlled by the uh, by the component software. But let's just simply click on SL Mark III. Now um, I'm going to basically create a very quick backup of my SL Mark III here. So I'm just going to hit Get Pack from SL Mark III. Now that's going to take a little bit of time just to pull all of this data. As I mentioned, we've got 64 different sessions available to us on the SL Mark III. So that's going to take a little bit of time to just basically create that backup for us. So whilst that's doing that, let's just have a little think about, um, you know, what components actually is. Well, components is available in kind of two formats. Um, I'm working here on a standalone format. This is uh, completely free, uh, completely, uh, yeah, just go to the novationmusic.com website and you'll be able to get hold of Novation components from there. Um, and this is an application that is sitting on my local computer. So this is actually on my computer and I'm con controlling and creating these templates and managing my sessions directly from my, my own personal hardware. But Novation Components also exists in cloud format as well. Again, it's completely free. Um, and if you're using a Chrome or an Opera browser, you can just simply log on to the Novation Components website and still have full access to all of your different uh, session backups um, and templates. And this, of course, is the same for any piece of Novation equipment you're using. Uh, today, we're specifically looking at the SL Mark III, uh, but if I have a similar thing for my launch pad or for my peak synthesizer, I can just go online and I can get hold of all of the stuff that I've stored up there. So it's a really powerful way of being able to access your, um, your backups, your patches, your templates, whatever it is that you have stored up there from anywhere in the world. And that's a very, very powerful way of working, of being able to work. As I say, it's totally free, so there's no charge for this, um, and you can just quite simply get hold of it from the novationmusic.com website, or, or, or just do a search for Novation Components, and that will take you to it. 
Now, as I've been talking there, the backup is now completed. And here we can now see in components in the librarian section here. Now we've got actually a reference to all of the various different um, sessions that I have stored on my device. So here I'm on the session page on the SL Mark III, and you can see this one is labeled Chris user one, uh, sorry, user number two, <laughs> user three, user four, and then number six over here is called starting point. And you can see that these labels are showing up on the hardware. Now here, obviously in the software, I can just simply click on these and we can access these as well. Now, perhaps this first one, Chris, um, I want to maybe change its name. So I can just highlight it here and then just go to um, where it says Chris here, just hit and then just call this and we'll call this one for argument's sake we'll call that one calc there we go so we've now renamed it now i could go ahead and send all of these sessions back to my sl mark three or by just i just go up to the very top here in the top right hand side where it says sl uh, send sl to mark <laughs> send to sl mark three there we go or I could just simply say send a single session to the device so here I'm going to send calc to the device click on that and now I can choose which session number we're going to store it in now we have 64 sessions um, available to us and one of the tips here is that you really need to kind of know uh, your session the session that you want to send it to now if necessary you can use the hardware here to find the right session for you so here I'm gonna send calc to let's say uh, session number 63 so let's scroll all the way down session 63 highlight that send session and you'll see now it's just taking a moment to receive all that information it's gone in there now and now once that's gone in when the screen resets you'll see now this was uh, uh, number 63 it now says calc now perhaps I want a different uh, color for that now so actually this is still on the computer here it won't update on the computer until I retrieve all that info again but let's just change that to being yellow now and we'll do the same thing I'm going to send the session to the device and I'm going to send it back to number 63 here, send session. And once that goes through and the SL has a moment to just reboot back into the uh, main uh, window, you'll see now it still says calc, but actually we've changed the color. So that's a really handy thing in itself to be able to color code all your sessions. So let's say I have these. In fact, no, before we do that, let's just move some around. So if I grab this, this one here this is number 28 starting point and I just drag it here you'll see it just flips them over if I grab this one user and put it in place of the uh, starting point uh, uh, session here you'll see they just flip over as well but let's get those three starting points in fact, let's go four starting points together and now I'm going to color code these and I'm going to make them all this nice green and the reason for that is that basically if I was maybe going to be doing a live set or I need somewhere where I need to be organized, I could see that these are all going to be co-joined together. I could even call this, you know, part one, uh, part two, part three, part four. Maybe these four sessions make up a whole um, kind of piece of music and I want them to be very obviously um, uh, 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 together on the hardware. So very simply and straightforward, I can manage my, um, my sessions in this window so essentially this is it for the librarian it's a backup system um, some people have asked is the um, is this software um, basically uh, an editor for your sessions in terms of the data the MIDI notes all the automation and that sort of thing held within the SL mark 3 and it's not this is simply a librarian software if you want to do any of that editing on the SL mark 3 well basically you've got access to everything in the hardware here itself so you can do all of the editing directly onto the hardware but if this isn't a software editor for your sessions in terms of moving MIDI notes around or maybe correcting any notes or anything like that it really is a simple backup solution for you to be able to store and archive your work. Now, if we go back to the um, to this page, if I want to, I can then hit the save button and now I can save as. So let's go to save as and we'll call this um, uh, stream pack. Why not? Okay, we hit done 
And now that's just basically creating um, a file with all of this data on it. And now you'll see that it's been added into my library here. Now we've got a couple of ways to filter things here, just as a quick mention. You can see here I've got my SL factory pack from Novation. And if I don't want that to be in the list, I can just deselect the Novation stuff. And now I'm just being faced with all my user, um, user packs. Same again, if I want to remove all the user packs, I can just simply deselect and filter that out as well. Um, I can also uh, uh, go to pack settings. So here's the steep stream pack that I've just created. I can go to pack settings and I can say, OK, let's give this a different color so I can immediately recognize it. Um, and now when we come back, you'll see we've given that pack its own individual color. I can also manage my packs here by deleting. So if I just hit the delete button, it's now going to remove it. Now I have a bit of time here where I can restore that back to my uh, 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 back to my um, library. And if I go to the trash option here, you'll see now I've got all of these different um, deleted packs that I can uh, uh, bring well bring back in. I can just hit restore. Okay, bring that back. And now if we come back to tr remove or filter out the trash items, we'll see stream pack has come back in. So let's click on that. Now we've looked so far at how we can manage our sessions, um, but equally we can also manage our templates in here as well. So I go to the templates editor here, and this is now a huge big list of all the different templates that I have um, created in my uh, in my SL Mark III. And you know maybe I want to move these around. Maybe I want to say, okay, let's grab the Auto Boom and let's just move that to where the O Coast is. And now I've just swapped them around in the list. So we can quite easily do that. Or maybe I want to edit one of my templates as well. So maybe I want to take the Octa Track here and say I want to edit this. So I'm going to click on Edit. And then it'll say, do you want to leave this page? Because we're in a librarian page, but we do want to leave that page. We're going to now go to the template editor. So now we're into the template editor. And if I look at my faders here, we should see, yep, indeed, track one volume, track two volume, track three volume, track four, and so on and so forth. And this is the, uh, the part labeled Octatrack. So from my librarian, I can quite easily access my uh, templates that I've created here. I can move them around. I can edit them. I can also send directly to the device. Or if I want to replace or download, I can do the same thing here. So again, in the librarian window, I can manage my sessions, but equally I can quite happily manage my templates as well. So we've now looked at the librarian and the librarian, as I say, is going to give you a really nice comprehensive way of backing up your SL and archiving all this data uh, um, for you to be able to retrieve at any time. But perhaps one of the most kind of uh, complex sides, perhaps, of the SL Mark III is the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, we have all of these wonderful controls and we have the ability to be able to take total control over these parts and do whatever we like with them. So for this part of the session, I think it'd be quite nice if we maybe start and maybe create um, a patch or a template, I should say. Um, and I'm going to just explore some of the controls that we have. And I'm going to create some mappings so that I can control my Summit synthesizer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to an empty session over here. And I'm going to go to um, now my template list on the SL Mark III. Now to get to the template list, I press Shift and the Sessions button. This now gives me this list of templates. It also gives me access to my MIDI settings as well. So I'm going to go all the way down to, let's say, this one here. This is default. OK, default is a basic empty uh, patch. And this is now default. I don't need any MIDI to the USB in terms of controlling the summit. I do know that my summit is set to MIDI DIN 2. I have no CV and gate connected. And I do know that I want to get to channel 15 in order to control my summit. So now um, I should just be able to play the keys. And I'm actually playing the summit instrument. So I'm just going to initialize the summit um, and we'll just take that back to a single sawtooth now. Perfect. OK, so we're good. And I'm going to go back to my steps page, which is the kind of main view. And this has just brought up that default mapping for me. So here, 
I start to move things around. These controls are not mapped to do anything appropriate on the summit at the moment. So let's take a good look at now how we can start to delve into creating our own template. We'll look at the various different types of controls we get and let's see where this takes us. So let's now move uh, from the librarian and we're going to go to where it says template editor at the top, just next to where it says librarian. We're going to click on that and that's now going to take me to my template editor. Now, once again, I've got a library down here of all the various different um, pre-set uh, kind of mappings. And these are all the ones from Novation. So these are the ones that we give you. Um, and these are great. There's a huge list of them here. And at any point, I could just send any of these to my um, SL Mark III. Once again, I can deselect the Novation ones. And these now I have. Um, and now I'm showing some of the user ones that I've created. But in actual fact, in order to, to do what we want to do, I'm actually going to go to a new template and I'm going to create a template. So I'm going to click on create template. And the first thing that we're going to look at are the rotary controls. Now, of course, in this section, we can decide what we want each of these different controls to do. Um, here we're looking at bank one, which on the hardware is the top row. And if I scroll down using the arrow here, you'll see now we shift from CC21. Let's move down. Now it says CC31. So let's go to bank two, just to the left of the um, of the main controls here. Let's click on bank two and you'll see it says CC31. So this is giving me access to all 16 of the rotary controls that we have on the SL Mark III. Now, this first one, I'm going to set up to something very simple. Um, I want to set this to control the amplifier envelope attack on my summit. Now, in order to do this, I need to know um, what CC number, controller change number, it is that I'm going to use. So in order to do this, I'm basically just going to open up the summit manual um, like so. There we go. And now that I'm in the summit menu, I can scroll all the way down. And usually uh, with any type of um, uh, manual, you'll find the CC details um, towards the back of the manual. So let's just scroll back up a little bit and get past all the kind of patch names. And here we go. This is exactly what I'm after. Now I have a list of all the various different control values that I can use to start to take control of my summit synthesizer. So conveniently enough at the top here, it says the amp envelope attack. And this is CC number um, 86 just here. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back to Novation Components. Let's just uh, move the manu manual out of the way. Back to Novation Components. And this was, if I remember, 86, CC 86. And I've just put in there CC number 86 and I can leave the rest of these settings exactly as I want. We've got 128 values, so that's starting at zero, ending at 127, giving us 128 discrete values there. Seven bits, which is the standard kind of format for this control. And I'm gonna keep this with the default MIDI channel. I'm also gonna give this a name and I'm gonna call this Amp Attack, Ampat, <laughs> there we go. And you can see it's given it the name up in the um, on the on the pot as well. Um, CC 86. Everything's good there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to my SL Mark III. So let's just hit send to SL Mark III. Now, this is an interesting moment because we can now send this part to one of our templates. We can send it to any one of these templates that we have in the SL Mark III. We have 64 in total. But this can be a little bit confusing. Now, if I go to my templates page, you might see why. Here we've got the templates, but we're not given any numbers here. So that does make it a little bit more awkward to just kind of know exactly um, where it is you're going to save it into the SL. However, we have a great workaround for this, and that's if I go to part instead. Now, on the main SL window, I have eight parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I want to send it 
to part one. If you remember from my template list, I basic I chose a basic default template, an empty template that I'm not worried I would overwrite. I can just go over that at any point. And so if I save over that now, so go to part, part one. Actually, before we do that, sorry, I do beg your pardon. I should give this a name. So we'll call this uh, stream part. Why not? Okay, there we go. Stream part. I'm going to send to the SL Mark uh, 3. As I said, we're going to go to a part and we're going to go to part one. Now I'm going to hit send part. Once again, you'll see it just takes a moment for that part to go in. The SL will reset once it's uh, done. And now I have this labeled as stream part. Now, um, basically, that stream part has come in and that now allows me to control if I go up here. Sorry, yeah, I was onto the uh, um, 9 through to 16 controls, but let's go to 1 through to 8. Now you see we have amp attack. And now there's a basic sound. Let's add a bit of amp attack. So very simply and quickly created, um, yeah, created a mapping for the amplifier attack um, on this pot. Okay, so that's that's pretty neat. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to take um, this next pot and like all good synthesizer. Uh, controls, we really want to control the filter cutoff. So I'm going to call this now filter cut. Okay, we'll call that filter cut. And now I need to get my list back open of CC values and find the filter uh, controls. So let's just see where are we? They're going to be around here somewhere. They're going to be in the list. Let's see, we'll go a bit higher up. Here we go on the right hand side here, filter frequency. Now, what's interesting here is that we have a CC pair, which might sound a bit unnerving at first, but actually, again, this is very simple and straightforward to set up. Now, a CC pair is going to give us a higher resolution of control over um, over the uh, uh, over the, the, the control. Um, so basically, rather than just giving us 128 values, we've actually got 255 values or sorry 256 remembering that zero is a valid number of course all math boffin all good math bothi boffins can't even say that word all good maths boffins should know that and um, but basically now i'm going to use this now what happens here is i'm going to put in the cc value of 29 now when using a pair Basically, we're going to essentially ask the SL Mark III to increase the resolution of the encoder of this pot just directly above this uh, this control. So um, now what happens here is let's go back to um, the software to components. Let's just remove this um, and basically we'll keep it with CC. And I'm now going to set that to 29, which is the filter cutoff. But instead of using a 7-bit control, I'm going to increase the amount of resolution in that pot by going for 8 bits scaled. Now, 8 bits scaled is now going to allow me to, instead of end that pot at 127, I can actually type in a value here of 255. OK, now once I've done that, the CC knows automatically that we're going to be using essentially two CC values. Um, and I think if I'm correct, that basically it's going to take this basic CC number, the initial CC number, and add a value of 32 to it. And that should be uh, 61. Let's just have a quick look at the, men at the uh, manual again. 29 and 61. That's right. So basically, it now knows that we're going to use a different resolution, a higher resolution. We're going to give it a much wider kind of control here. And once again, I can now say, OK, send this to the SL Mark III. So now, once again, I'm going to send it to part, the stream part that I've got here. This is the easiest way I've found to basically um, keep all of your templates in the right place. Send part. It's now gone in, 
Take a moment for the SL to come through. And now we've got Thilt cut and now. I've got two controls here. I've got a basic standard CC control for the amp attack. And I've now got a high resolution control for the filter cutoff. So we're getting there now. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, okay, let's get some LFO amount. And once again, here we go. This is what I'm after, LFO1 into the filter, and that's gonna use another CC pair, and that's gonna give us uh, one to um, uh, 255 again. And this is um, we, we, um, essentially a positive and negative uh, type of control. So let's go back here. Let's go, and we'll call this LFO1 filt. That'll do. Now, I'm just going to refresh my memory again. So this is CC28 that we add into here. So 28. And we're going to set that to um, uh, 255. OK. And the pivot point is zero, which means that when it gets to zero, there's going to be no... Um, uh, oh, let's go 255. There we go. Ah, I need to change that to 8 bits. Otherwise, it won't let me add 255 there. OK, that's better. And when we get to zero, we're going to have no LFO being set to the filter. But now that we've set that up, let's send to the SL Mark III once again, part one, send part. And now, once again, once we've uh, got that into the SL Mark III, so we've now got LFO amount to the filter. If we go to zero, to well, slap bang in the center here, one, two, seven. There we go. There's no filter control. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to now take this next control here and I'm going to call this LFO one speed. There we go. LFO one speed. Let's go back to the manual. And now I need to find the LFO section, um, which is here lfo one rate yet again we've got another um yeah we've got another cc pair so once again we'll put that onto what is it it is uh, lfo one rate here 30 and 62 so we'll go 30 and we'll put that 8 bit scaled 8 bit scaled by the way is the medium that we use for the innovation summit um, you've also got 14 bits as well so if you have a system that works with 14 bit um, MIDI as well. You can easily go there and at that point you can have a resolution of 16,000 um, or, or greater. I think I can't remember the exact figure for that, but basically, yeah, we've got an enormous um, high resolution there. But for now, let's go to 255. Let's put this as 8 bit scaled. LFO speed, CC30, there we go, send to SL Mark 3, part 1, send part, and off it goes. And now when we go back to our SL Mark 3, um, let's... Uh... So there we go, very simple and straightforward. And we can go to carry on to our heart's desire. We've got another um, another 12 different pots that we can use with these. So it's really useful. Now, the next thing I want to do is maybe let's, ah, yes, of course. Now let's add some interesting controls here. Um, and these are gonna be a different type of control now. And I want to find where have we got, yes. We're now gonna add some saw density to the um uh, to the uh, to this next pot saw density is essentially a super saw sound that we can add to our saw waves so we'll call this saw dense saw dense and now once that's in um you'll notice that in the manual this is now using an nrpn a non-registered parameter number now what does that mean well basically we have 128 different CCs that we can use, uh, but we've got a bit more than that um, that amount of controls on the hardware itself. So we need to use a non-registered 
parameter number. This means it's a free number that we can assign as we see fit for the hardware. And it does mean that we're now going to use two different numbers um, specifically. And we're going to use a lowest significant bit, LSB, and the most significant bit, the MSB. And that's these two numbers here, 0 and 17. So let's go to our, um, our template editor and now when I click in the assignment type you can see these are the different types of controls I've got. So far we've just used CCs but actually let's go now to NRPN and you'll see now I have two little windows here and it's saying 25 and, um, and 0. So let's um, pop in here 0 and let's pop in here 17 as per the list. Now let's just double check on our um, page here, saw density. Now we've only got 128 values here, so I don't need to use any higher resolution than 7 bits, which is the standard. Now let's go and hit send to SL Mark 3. Um, so send to SL Mark 3, off we go, part 1. And in the same way, that's just going to send it directly into the hardware. And once that's done, um, then basically now we have saw density. So let's open up that filter. Let's take off the um, let's take off the amount of filter to the uh, to the sound. And you can now hear we're getting saw density. Nice big rich saw pad sound. And once again, let's do this. Do a similar thing here. So we're going to go NRPN, and now we're going to choose the detune, which is now 018. So once again, we could quickly do that. We can then go to this one and we can say, okay, zero, we go 18. And that's now going to be saw detune. So give it a name, saw detune. And let's send that to the SL Mark three. Part one, send part. Bang, it's gone in. And now when it comes back up on the screen, saw detune, so no. So we've looked at two different types of controls there that we can add to the um, to the SL Mark III and the rotary controls. Other controls that we've got, we could send MIDI note numbers. So let's click on this one. We'll just have a quick look. Send a MIDI note number. And at this point, we can send a specific velocity. Um, we can send, ah, actually, we can send 100, uh, 128 note numbers there if we want. And um, we've got a lot of power there. Um, but actually, let's go back to NRPNs, and this time, yeah, let's move now to the, um, let's go to the buttons. And that relates to the buttons that we have here on the hardware, which are just up on the right-hand side. So here, these buttons here, okay. And what I want to do here is give myself the ability to be able to program up how to change the waveform for oscillator one. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to components. Um, CC51 is labeled here, but let's just click on that and we'll go, we'll go wave up. And this one I want to use as a wave down. So what do we do here? Well, if I go to my behavior, we can see that these buttons have a number of different ways of being set up. We have momentary, toggle, increment and decrement and trigger. Now I want to be able to move through my um, wave shapes using two buttons, one to take me up and one to bring me back down. So I'm going to choose increment decrement. Now I've chosen that, you'll see that we have um, a button, a, a little, ah, click on here, beg your pardon, this is the one that we need to choose. Now the pairs will always go to the next one. So I beg your pardon, by clicking here that kind of confused it a bit, but let's go back down to wave up. And if I now say increment decrement, now I'm going to hit pair and you'll see now that's called wave up and that's wave up. So in actual fact, let's just change this name. We don't want the up bit. We'll just call it wave. Okay. And that means that now these two um, buttons are co-joined together. One is up and one is down. Now let's go back to our manual and we want to find oscillator shape. And that is, let's see, oscillator wave, this one here. Again, another NRPN, and we've got five values, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how do we set this up? Well, let's go back. Let's see. So it's 0 and 14 for the NRPN is the first thing. So let's choose NRPN, and we want 0. 
Oop. zero and then it was 14 yep yeah, zero and then 14 okay and what I want to do now is actually go to the value and say zero to four I don't want 128 values here I've only five, five wave shapes for oscillator one uh, the sine the triangle the sawtooth the square um, and then the wave tables so I just want to move between those and there we go zero through to four so let's send that to the SL now hit send part one as before send it's going to take a moment to go in and now when I play Let's just get the filter open. We've got the saw detune going on. But let's say I want to change the waveform now to the triangle, to the sawtooth, to the square, and to the wavetable. And we can use this to move back. Go back to the sign. So the great thing about what we've done here is essentially we have taken two uh, controls here. We've applied an NRPM, a single NRPM control, but to these two values, and we've called these increment and decrement, and this allows me to move up and down as if they're just up and down arrows on a cursor keyboard or something like that. Now, let's go back, and this time we're gonna look at program change. So here, I'm going to send it to program change. And once again, I'm going to increment, decrement these. So I'm going to pair these up and we're going to call this program change, program change. OK, and now we're just going to basically move up and down our programs on the SL Mark III into the summit. Hopefully this should work, so I'm just going to play a quick note. And I can move back down. So this is a really neat feature that we can use. And also this opens up into the SL Mark III's sequencer as well. And let's just give this a go. So I'm gonna, um, basically, the sequencer is not running, but I've hit the record button. This now allows me to press a step and say, okay, let's add an automation there. So I've now added automation that on this step is now going to have an increase in value for preset. Let's go to this step and another program change. This step, let's uh, go up again. This step, let's go down. This step, let's go up. And again, we'll go here. So I've now set a whole load of different program changes in the sequencer. Now, if I hit play, ooh, let's just mute the uh, octa track here. We don't need that just at this point. So, um, yeah, so we've now got all these program changes that are being sent to the synthesizer. But of course, we've no notes there. So I'm just going to hit um, record and I'm just going to record some notes in. Now, of course, that sounds a bit of a dodgy kind of collection of sounds, but it is hopefully giving you the idea there that we're able to change the patch sound directly from the sequencer itself which is a really neat thing to be able to do. Okay. I can also affect a change by pressing the pad. So we've got all of this type of control here to be able to essentially sequence the hardware um, with program change details, um, as well as all the, um, well, yeah, all the automation stuff that we're creating as well. Right, so let's move back now to components. We're nearly towards the end of the session, I think now, but let's go to the faders. Now the faders here allow us to have CCs or NRPNs 
in the same way. Um, but in also, and this is where things get very interesting, we can use things like channel pressure, which is a control that we can use. We can also send program change from a fader as well. So we can use the fader here to actually select the program that we want. This is good because this will give us a whole 128 values here um, instantly. And I could just very simply hit a patch and say, okay, on this, I'm going to have this value on this patch. I'm going to have this value, this patch, I'm going to have this value. And that allows me to jump even further around on the uh, program changing. Um, but what I want to do is explore this, which is a nice little trick that um, I kind of discovered just before. And this is going to allow me to use poly polyphonic aftertouch, but instead of using it from a keyboard, I'm going to use it with the faders here. So let's just uh, clear out any automation that might be. There we go. Um, and in here, I'm just going to say, OK, let's take poly after touch note 41. Let's move all of these to poly after touch. And I'm not going to bother naming these. I'm just going to very simply just choose poly after touch. Poly after touch. And we'll do this eight times. OK. And we've now got polyphonic aftertouch on the faders. And this is specific to each of these note numbers. So we're running from note 41 to note 48. Once again, let's send this to the SL Mark III. OK. Part one, send the part. And now my faders are going to allow me to control the synthesizer from a poly aftertouch point of view. Now I'm going to have to very, very quickly just set up a patch on the summit. So um, yeah, just very quickly do that. Um, basically, I'm going to initialize the patch, go to my mod matrix, take the aftertouch here, and I'm going to set that to oscillator one pitch, and I'm just going to add an amount here. So let's just put that to, I don't know, let's say 44. Okay, that's cool. And that's that's now all set up on the um, on the summit, ready for me to go. So I need to find the right note, um, and I believe it should be maybe this one. No. There it is. So that um, is now relating to note 48, this one here. So what I'm going to do now, this is going to get a bit messy, I think, in terms of sound initially, but it just hopefully will prove quite, it's going to be quite an interesting thing. I'm going to latch um, on eight notes um, and I'm going to very, yeah, and then I'm going to set up eight notes on here and then treat the faders as a kind of a swarm control, a swarm uh, oscillator control. So let's just go. Now this sounds pretty, pretty nasty as it is, but the notes are latched on, and now... So now, this is giving me a nice individual control over all of the oscillators using polyphonic aftertouch directly from the summit. This is probably going to be doing quite a few people's heads in, but I think it's a, a great little tip, tip <laughs> technique. Just add a bit of reverb. And we've got an instant soundtrack. So there we go. So that's a nice, interesting thing you can do. And it's quite useful, actually, that these faders here do give us the ability for polyphonic aftertouch. Now, let's just have a very quick rundown on the remaining sort of control. So we've looked at the rotary controls. We've looked at the faders. We've also looked at the buttons and how we can use program change and pairing these buttons to move through different values for your instruments as well. With the pad controls, we've got quite a lot more control here. And that's because we have two stages of control. We have pressure and we have a hit for the pad. And again, we can have this to be set to whatever we want, CC, NRPM, note, program change, or even song position if you're working within a DAW. Excuse me, you can set up a, in specific song positions um, for with the pads. 
Um, but after that as well, we've also got after um, we've got a touch sensitivity and after touch. And again, we can do use that for CC values, program change, um, channel pressure or polyphonic aftertouch, much in the same way as we've just been using a poly aftertouch with the faders. We can also do that by going directly to our grid um, here and then just using the effect poly aftertouch is already set up. <laughs> so that's already set up on there for me. But that's a really useful thing as well. OK, um, finally, on the uh, on the section here, we've got our wheels controls. And of course, we've got a CC controller wheel here um, on the um, on the hardware. We've got it over here. Uh, this is the wheel control. And I have the ability again to set up how I want this to be. With the pedals, once again, we've got three inputs for different pedals. So we've got sustain, um, a foot switch control and an expression control. And once again, I can choose how these behave and in pretty much the exact same way as we set up with the pots and those sorts of controls. And then finally, on the keys as well, we can also assign aftertouch to various different things. Um, and we can assign the aftertouch here to CCs, NRPN, channel aftertouch, poly aftertouch as well. It's not a poly aftertouch keyboard. It's important to note this, uh, but I could set up the key aftertouch to be a poly aftertouch control for a specific note. Um, so that, that, can be, uh, that can be very useful as well. Okay, so really we've looked at pretty much everything to do with um, uh, the uh, component software, in particular um, with the SL Mark III. We've looked at using the librarian as a backup software. We've looked at also um, using the templates um, uh, editor as well and being able to manage our templates um, in, the, in, in the template uh, 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 window as well. But also in the template editor itself, we've looked at some very kind of um, uh, hopefully less complex now that we've seen how they work, but some uh, some quite interesting and very powerful controls that we have for the various different aspects of the SL Mark III. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and if you've um, if you've got some ideas for your uh, for your SL Mark III, hopefully after watching this video, you should, should feel comfortable enough to be able to go to the Novation Components site, um, get hold of the uh, get hold of components and start to program up your SL as you want. So thanks very much for your watching and thanks very much for your time. I hope it's been uh, interesting for you and uh, yeah, see you next time.